Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's explore cylindrical coordinates. Well, of course, cylindrical coordinates are coordinates that are good to describe cylindrical shapes. And yes, in e and we'll, we'll encounter a lot of cylindrical shapes. So when we think of cylindrical shapes, if we, for example, draw the, the XYZ axis like this, and we draw a cylinder like this, where the center of the cylinder is, uh, of course, uh, is located where the z-axis is located. So if we think about, if I go ahead and get rid of this like this, and then you can see where the z-axis will go right to the center of the cylinder when we have a situation like this, cylindrical coordinates are really good in describing what is happening. So let's take a look and see. Let's take a point in space, there it is. If we project it straight down, we get onto the xy plane. And so the distance from our point to the xy plane in the z direction, well, that is indeed a z component. So the z component in cylindrical coordinates is the same, the same as the z component in Cartesian coordinates. What is different is that we have a vector or a direction from the z axis parallel to the xy plane to the point. That is the rho distance, that is the radial distance from the z to the edge of the cylinder. So, for example, we go like this, that would be considered the rho distance. And so that is one of the three components in the cylindrical coordinates. And you can see that that distance is parallel to the xy plane. And now we have one more which describes the angle relative to the x-axis. So you can see the phi angle is relative to the x-axis and that's exactly the same as we see in spherical, spherical coordinates. So if you want to figure out what the x component is in space in cylindrical coordinates, we can see that x is equal to the distance from the z-axis to the point. That of course can be projected down on the xy plane. And you can see that this distance right here from there to there is the same as the distance from there to there. And if we want to take the x component, we take that which is the hypotenuse and multiply it times the cosine of phi because the angle is adjacent to the x component. So x equals rho times the cosine of phi. If we now want to have the y value of that point, which is the same as the distance from there to there, uh, well, that would be projected. Notice that this distance would be the same as the distance we see here in, up in space. And so this distance y is equal to the distance rho times the sine of phi because it's the side opposite to the angle. And finally z equals to z because that's the same as, uh, in cylindrical coordinates as it is in Cartesian coordinates. If we want to find the phi vector, the distance here, it's simply the x and the y components. So it's the x component in the x direction plus the y component in the y direction. The x component is phi cosine phi, the y component is phi sine phi, or I should say rho cosine phi, rho sine phi, I keep calling it phi, but it's actually rho, of course. And if we want to take the unit vector, we divide the vector by its own magnitude, that gets rid of the rows. So the unit vector in the rho direction is cosine of phi in the x direction plus sine of phi in the y direction. So again, this is the symbol rho, and that means the radial distance from the z-axis to any point in space. To find the phi unit vector, now notice that if we, if we draw the unit vector and we're projected down onto the xy plane, notice that this angle phi is the same as this angle phi right here. So in the x direction, notice it's in the negative x direction, and notice that that would make it opposite to the angle phi. So therefore, we have phi equals the negative sine of phi because it's the opposite to the phi angle in the x direction. And in the y direction, it is the adjacent side, so we take the distance the divided, multiply times the cosine of phi, so cosine of phi in the y direction, and that gives you the unit vector phi, and of course the unit vector in the z direction is the same as it is in Cartesian coordinates. So that is the cylindrical coordinate system. It's a lot easier to work with the cylindrical system than it is to work with the spherical system. But spherical system sometimes is obviously necessary as well, so we'll spend a little time becoming a little bit more familiar with the cylindrical coordinates and all the vector functions that go along with it. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to do that.